Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 74. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook, Business 210, Chapter 7. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 7 website. Hey, we're in Chapter 7. we got to talk a little bit about sampling, point estimates, and the most amazing topic, the sampling distribution of X bar. That's coming up later. Let's start with sampling. Now here we have a list and this is going to be simple random sampling which means we have a list of all the items. Now selecting a sample you could read books and take whole classes about this. This is just a, a simple example when you actually have a list of items um, and how you would sample. Excel has a great function called RAND and then we'll also use RAND and VLOOKUP together. We'll actually use the integer function too. Now here it is, we have a list and we just want to take the randomly select seven people. So we want a sample size of seven. The easy way to do this is to add a column right next to your data set. Now for this to work you have to have a proper data set. Field names at the top, a row is a record, and there's no spaces anywhere because we're going to use sort, and sort is a data analysis feature that requires that your data is set up that way. Hey, we're going to add an extra column and use the random uh, random RAND function. Field name, we'll just say RAND. Enter. Now I'm going to uh, add some formatting, add a border and some green. As you know by now, I always add the green to the cell where the formulas or the answers are, and here it is. Make this a little bit bigger here, zoom in, whoop. Oh, I have lots of notes up here about how the RAND works, even the RAND between, and lots about the VLOOKUP, because that'll be the first time that we've seen the VLOOKUP. Equals RAND, and this is an argumentless function. You do it like that, close parentheses, and what it does is it generates with uh, even probability between all the numbers, a number between 0 and 1 out to 15 digits. And it's programmed so that it picks numbers uh, in equal proportion uh, within that range, and that's what a simple random sample does. Now I'm going to control enter. Now I'm going to use my trick since the data set is, uh, there's data next to it. I'm going to double click this fill handle right here and send it down. Now, what does that do? Well, it generates random numbers. Now, the F9 key, remember I got lots of notes up here, the F9 key, if you hit F9, it randomizes. Randomizes. Now, this is a volatile function. Anytime you do anything in the spreadsheet, it will randomize. Now, here's how you select. We could either do, as our textbook does, find the in our case, we're, we have seven we want. We could find the seven smallest, or we could find the seven biggest. And here's how you do it. In 2007, textbook says, oh, go up to home, and then to sort, and then sort A to Z. The other way to do it is to the data, where all the data uh, uh, features are in Excel, and then say A to Z. But in 2007, it's great, they added a uh, right click, so you can right click sort, and then there's A to Z. A to Z goes smallest to largest. If you want to do it the other way, which is perfectly all right, you could do it that way. But watch this. I sort. Now wait a second. That doesn't look very small right there. This one's smaller than that. I thought A to Z sorted it. Here's the deal. When you do it, for a zillionth of a second, it actually does put all of the smallest ones at the top. But as soon as it's done, it recalculates, because RAND is always recalculating. So even though it seems like it got the uh, big one here and the small one there. For that moment, the top seven here really did have the seven smallest. Now, the way the textbook says to do this is you create your RAND, and then you highlight the whole co the column right here. And watch this. You can copy. You get your dancing ants, and then you go up to Paste, and Paste in 2000 and, uh seven, there's a paste values. If you wanted to see all the paste specials, you go there, and then you click values, and then you click OK. What that did is it converted. That's no longer the RAND function. And there are 15 digits there. It's up to 15 digits. And then when you right click sort, you'll actually see that it, it worked correctly. 
and there's the smallest ones at the top. Uh, you don't need to pay special values because it really does sort them. And people that have lists that where they're continually selecting samples, they keep that function there. I'm going to say equals rand. And then I'm going to double click and send it down. So right clicking and sorting really does work. Now, there's a problem here, and in earlier versions, you didn't get this very polite dialog box. I highlighted this column, and when you're doing any data analysis, whether it's sort or filter or pivot tables, you got to avoid this. It's saying, do you want to expand the selection, which is the default, which you do because it knows there's an actual data set here, or continue with this current selection. You almost never want to select this one, so I'm going to click Cancel. What you really want is you always select one cell in your data set. If I right click sort on the student name field, it will sort alphabetically on that. If I select here, it will get us back to our original order. So right click sort, it, it gets it back to our original order. But what you want to do is when the RAND function is there and you're continually extracting samples from this particular data set, right click sort and that's it. It will work even though it looks like uh, the bigger ones are at the top. Now I got to show you uh, another option. Sometimes people like to actually extract the names so we would want to take like the top seven and put them right here. The easy way to do it is just to, to take the top seven and copy and then paste them over here somewhere, right? That's fine if you do it that way. But there's an automatic way, and this is great because people do have data sets and they're continually extracting. Now the first thing is, notice we have one through uh, however many there are here. And let's go ahead and sort this column. So we have one through uh, one through whatever the bottom number is, 52. And uh, as long as you have your data set set up like that and the things you want to extract here, uh, we can actually generate random numbers between 1 and 52. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. There's actually a built-in function called ran between. And it just needs a bottom and the top. This is started in 2007. It was by default. So you say 1, 52. And that will randomly generate a number between 1 and 52. Now, there is the possibility, as you can see here, that you will get repeats. And I actually have a video at YouTube that shows you how to not do this, but it, it requires a lot more than we're going to do in this class. But that's a great uh, built-in function, this ran between. If you don't have that, or you don't like to use RAND between because you're sending this file to other people that don't have 2007, you want to use this method. And this is a, a known method for a long time. People have been using this forever. Int. Int is an integer. Notice there's 15 digits here. So when we uh, use the RAND function, we don't want all these uh, uh, um, decimals, we actually want an integer because our first column has uh, integers. So we're going to use the int and then we're going to use the rand. Now if we did this right here it would um, always give us 1 or 0 because this is generating between 0 and 1. But what we want is up to 52. Well think about this. What's 0 times 52? 52. 52 um, 0, right? What's 1 times 52? 52. What's 0.5 times 52? It's 26. So the way you generate uh, whole numbers from RAND is to multiply it times 52. Uh, now multiplying it by 52, let's just try this. I'm going to close parentheses on this and see if this works. I'm going to hit uh, F9, 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 F9. It looks like it's working pretty good. Oh, but did you see that zero there just for a moment? Here's the reason why. When you do RAND 52, RAND can get really close to zero, like 0 .00001. And when it, that happens, that number that's really close to zero times 52 gets converted to a zero by the integer. So when you don't want zero to 51, in essence, then you add one. This method right here has been around uh, a long time. And this is how most spreadsheets that you will see have that as the method of randomly selecting a number between, in this case, one and whatever this max number is there. So that's the method I'm going to use. I'm going to copy it down. Now next we want to talk about the VLOOKUP.
Now, let's just figure out, this is the first time we're going to see VLOOKUP in this class, and this is not an Excel class where we learn that, but uh, those of you that are going to go out and work, it's one of the most common functions, and people in job interviews love to ask, do you know how to use VLOOKUP? So we'll learn how to use it here, and we'll see another example in this chapter. Now, here's how it works. Hey, this three right here, I want to take this and put it into my brain and go, okay, I'm going to look for a three and then race through the first column of my table. Notice my table has numbers and names. And when I hit my three, I then want to jump over to the second column, get that name and deliver that name to there. So I'm going to type Y-U-E-N. Now, that would be fine if I uh, did all of these by hand, but there's a function that'll do exactly that. Watch this. I'm going to actually uh, make this really small here and this one here so that I can build this function. I'm going to build it right here. Equals, and it's called VLOOKUP. Now, VLOOKUP, the V is for vertical because our table is orientated vertical. There's lots of other lookup functions in Excel, but this is the most common. Vertical, vertical, right? So the first thing is just like we, when we looked at our three and put it into our brain, you need to put the lookup value into VLOOKUP's brain. So you click there. That's the number we're looking up comma. Now, just like we did, we looked at a three and then we went over to our table, right? We had to know which table to go look at. Well, lookup, VLOOKUP doesn't know what table unless you tell it. So you have to highlight the whole table. I'm going to highlight the two cells, control shift down arrow. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key because we need to lock that. Now, comma, column index. Now, you remember when we did it by hand, we took a three, we went over to the first column, we raced down, we found our three. In this case, it would find 33, right? So it'll find 33. But 33 is not what we want, so you have to tell the VLOOKUP, hey, don't take the thing from the first column, take it from the second column. Now, the fact that A and B are here have nothing to do with it. It's the fact that, that um, the actual table, and this table could be anywhere in the spreadsheet, this is the second column. So we need to tell explicitly VLOOKUP, hey, go get the thing from the second column. Finally, comma, <coughs> and the fourth argument is whether you're looking up an approximate match, that's for like income taxes where you have gaps like dollar amounts in the first column, or exact match. Now, false we know by now means zero, so we're going to put a uh, zero. True is one, false is zero. And that means it'll find an exact match. As it runs down here, it'll look for the 33. Close parentheses. Now, control enter and copy that formula down. Now, uh, let's just see if it worked. Six, did it get Jonathan right? Seven, did it get Moses? Yeah. Nine, did it get Amanda? Yeah. Now hit the F9 key. And there you go. That is a great way to select. Now, this method here awesome. If you get a repeat um, like we did earlier, uh, just hit F9 again until you get uh, what, whatever non-repeat situation you want. But it doesn't look like we're getting too many repeats, so this method is pretty good. Again, if you uh, want to to select a sample without repeats, uh, go ahead and search my channel at YouTube. Alright, that is how to select a sample. We saw the RAN for uh, simple random sample, and we saw the V lookup, and we saw the int and ran together. Okay, when we come back, we'll talk in our next video, we'll talk about point estimates. See you next video.